as many have requested, a Discord server for thoughts on thinking has finally been made. So make sure to join up and get involved. Links can be found in the description and comment section below. The Tao is the central function of Taoism, the ancient Eastern philosophy of Chinese origin. The way in which the Tao is specifically characterized is of enigmatic nature. One may see it as holding the intention of resembling paradoxes, distinct differences and opposites in its description. Others may see it as resembling nothingness, plentitude and continuity all in one. With such a broad, diverse explanation, the Western tradition would find it dazzling as to what the Tao is actually supposed to be. What is its definition? But the Taoist would point that the issue is with language, not the Tao itself. We use language to define and specify our understanding of the world around us. Objects, concepts, creatures of the great and small, for creative purposes and to breathe new life within the theoretical, numinal and phenomenal worlds. The explanation of the Tao is often referred to as the One, the One which is responsible for creating the universe. All that which is of old and new came to be in possession by virtue of the One. I quote, Heaven in virtue of the limpid, earth in virtue of the One is settled, Gods in virtue of the one have their potencies. The valley in virtue of the one is full. The myriad creatures in virtue of the one are alive. Lords and princes in virtue of the one become leaders in the empire. End quote. It is the Tao which makes these what they are. The Tao is also described in physical terms. With it not being of simple explanation, it is presented as an enigma. I quote, its upper part is not dazzling, its lower part is not obscure. Dimly visible, it cannot be named, and returns to that which is without substance. This is called the shape that has no shape, the image that is without substance. This is called indistinct and shadowy. Go up to it and you will not see its head. Follow behind it and you will not see its rear. End quote. If we use a specific term to describe attributes of a thing, we come to find that there are also opposite terms which will do the same for something else. The Tao in this instance cannot be described by such a specific term because it reduces the Tao, which is also referred to as the one, to something singular, which thus not only defines its meaning, but also, as definitions go, limits the meaning with regards to its prescription and diffuses the essence of the Tao itself. Therefore, when the Tao is referred to as the One, how are we to characterize its metaphysics or architecture? Plato believed in the idea of the forms, which he described as perfectly abstract, unchanging, idealistic concepts in reality which are ever existing, going beyond time and space. This idea that there are consistent forms that reign within its own realm of forms beyond the sensible world is completely different from the Tao. Plato claims that the forms exist like characters, separate forms that are different from each other. But the Tao sees itself as one, the only one. The only eternity is nothingness, yet everything else, such as substance, is transitory. For the Tao, this platonic idea of a plurality of forms that are unchanging and consistent beyond time and space is not accepted as being what makes up the metaphysics of the Tao. The Tao doesn't separate itself in different forms that reign eternal, but regard itself as a more fluctuating, enigmatic force that is something and nothing at the same time. Plato continues with this line of thought that the realm of forms are that which make the true reality. The phenomenal world which we recognise through the senses is not representative of the true reality, but weak and fragile representations of the true reality itself. Thus, true reality is not found through the senses according to Plato, but that the universal forms are the only true reality. Because these forms to Plato are totally real, 
he claims that they are also totally knowable because they are complete. But this idea is another contradiction to Taoism. Taoism looks upon the Tao as unknowable. In regards to Plato, there is no reason to assume that the totally real is totally knowable, especially if something is transcendent, such as the realm of forms. So in that regard, the Tao takes the upper hand. But by saying this, Taoism must also agree that if the Tao is unknowable, then truth is also unknowable or ineffable. This is then something which is accepted. In the Chuan Zhu, the concept of heaven remains very important. The Tao also is referred to differently. It is often referred to as the way of something. In relation to heaven, it means the way that heaven follows, or for man, the way that he ought to follow, for his life or governing a state. In the Lao Tzu, this understanding of the Tao, as I have previously explained, changes. It becomes its own, detaches from its relations with heaven to become its complete replacement. But ideas of heaven still continue. For example, the way of heaven takes on a new tone and mood. The way of heaven in the Tao Te Ching is actively redirecting the excessive to the deficient, to lift up the lower people among the earth giving needed goods to the oppressed, taking side of the good man and the unfortunate. This in relation to the Tao is very different, as the Tao is amoral and not associated to the personal dealings of life. I quote, Is not the way of heaven like the stretching of a bow? The high it presses down, the low it lifts up, the excessive it takes from, the deficient it gives to. It is the way of heaven to take from what has an excess in order to make good what is deficient. It is the way of heaven to show no favoritism. It is forever on the side of the good man. As man was previously told to model his behavior on heaven, he is now told to model his behavior on the function of the Tao. To do so, it becomes necessary to understand how the Tao functions. I quote, Turning back is how the way moves. Weakness demeans the way employs. The weak, submissive and bent are connected concepts to the Tao, as they are qualities that the Tao displays. The movement of turning back or cyclical change is very representative of the Tao. What this incites in relation to the Tao is that anything weak becomes strong. But when such a process fulfills itself to its limit, the reversal process of decline occurs once more, to give way to process development once again. Development, decline, repeat. The Tao Te Ching states that we should, I quote, hold fast to the submissive. But what does this mean? Think of a children's slide, for example. It takes time to get up to the top of the slide. If it is a very high up slide or water park ride, it can take a while to get up to the top. This represents development. But when falling down the slide, the process of decline back to the ground is fast and quick. It completes itself in an instant flash. As I have previously said, the Tao is in the movement of turning back, in cyclical change. Thus the precept of holding fast to the submissive not only makes sense, but it is a useful tool for when one begins to fall rapidly from a state once known and respected. We often become too established and comfortable with such a state that we forget how life unfolds in the motion of turning back within cyclical change. Thus if one knows the way of the Tao, then one is to know not to fall hard, but instead to hold fast to the submissive and use one's own knowledge to avoid the hard, unpleasant fall. As you may remember, when you were a child, you would always want to go back on that slide again and again. But when mum told you that we had to go back home, you may have gotten upset and cried. Still being young, you would not only fall hard against the decline of the slide to constantly want to keep going back down it, but also fall hard against having to leave the play park. Thus, this links directly into another lesson from the Tao. 
if you are to hold fast to the submissive, understand the process of the Tao, how it functions in life, to not get too acquainted with the position in life, then the teachings of knowing contentment and knowing when to stop are directly understandable. No contentment and you will suffer no disgrace. Know when to stop and you will meet with no danger. You can then endure. He who knows contentment is rich. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, comment down below, donate to my Patreon if you are interested in supporting the content of my channel, subscribe, join my community discord as many have requested, and with that said, thanks for watching and I will speak to you in the next video.